Time for some business news now, starting with the corporate battle that's happening at the very top of entertainment giant Disney. Our business editor, Charles Pellegrin, is on set to tell us more. That's right, Allison. As a reminder, um, emblematic uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger returned to the company in November after a, a previous very successful stint between 2005 and 2020. Uh, he came back with the objective of bringing the business back on its feet after the pandemic badly hurt its theme park and uh, after the launch of a costly streaming uh, service. And now he also has to contend with an activist investor who wants to change the way things are run, setting the stage for what's being called one of the biggest boardroom battles in years. The activist is uh, Tryon Partners and its uh, CEO Nelson Peltz. Uh, Tryon owns uh, a $900 million stake in the company. Peltz put his hat in the ring to become director of the company, but was rejected and is now calling on investors to get him a seat in the boardroom. He also released a report criticizing Iger's strategy of mergers and acquisitions, especially the purchase of 21st Century Fox back in 2018. He also criticized cost and efficiencies in Disney's streaming business, resulting in $11 billion in losses. Over the last year, Disney's share price has fallen close to 40% from over $157 uh, a year ago to uh, $96 uh, a share uh, currently. Now, with many investors, uh, just like Tryon, worried about the amount being spent on the group's streaming business. Moving on now, perhaps some good news for FTX's creditors. The collapsed cryptocurrency exchange has identified $5 billion in liquid assets and at a court hearing on Wednesday was authorized to sell four of its subsidiaries to repay creditors. The company and its founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, have been charged with fraud for using customer funds on the FTX platform on a separate private trading company. Nine million people lost money on the exchange. And Egypt is facing a worsening economic crisis after the central bank devalued its currency, which sent its value plummeting to a record low against the U.S. dollar. The measure was a requirement of the terms of a $3 billion bailout loan granted by the International Monetary Fund. Catherine Viet has more. Less bang for their buck as Egyptians shop for basic goods. The prices are crazy. If I buy something today for one pound, tomorrow I will get it for two or three pounds. To tackle rising inflation and comply with the terms of a $3 billion bailout loan from the IMF in September, the Egyptian central bank devalued its currency, which sent it plummeting to a record low against the U.S. dollar while making imported goods much more expensive. Today we sell our goods in the afternoon at prices different from those of the morning and night. There is stagnation in the market and an economic depression. Some people do not have money. It's a problem without a solution. The war in Ukraine dealt a blow to the Egyptian economy. It dried up tourism from two of its largest markets, Russia and Ukraine, cutting off a key source of hard currency. It also sent wheat prices soaring, a problem for one of the world's largest grain importers. Coupled with rising energy costs, the government reported that inflation hit nearly 22 percent in December and food prices rose nearly 38 percent compared to a year earlier. Some analysts are hoping the Egyptian pound's decline will entice foreign investors. This crisis will end when people who've been collecting dollars start to relinquish and change them to Egyptian pounds, and when the state manages to raise its foreign cash reserves to $45 billion. The IMF is also requiring that Egypt carry out urgent reforms to shift an economy dominated by powerful state and military-led enterprises to more private activity. TSMC, the world leader in advanced semiconductor manufacturing and Taiwan's national industrial champion, has announced a 78% increase in net profits for the fourth quarter of 2022, a quarterly record. The main reasons uh, for the results are its uh, sales of advanced chips at a time when the wider industry is struggling because of weaker demand for electronic devices because of rising inflation. Let's see how uh, the markets are doing this hour. Stocks opening higher in Europe this Thursday, as you can see. Uh, the London, the FTSE in London up uh, by one-third of a percent. The Paris Cat Gallon up uh, almost half a percent. And DAX in Frankfurt up 0.14%. Uh, in Asia, we're seeing 
uh, stocks higher as well at the close as uh, investors uh, away the publication of December inflation figures in the U.S. later this Thursday. You can see uh, the uh, Hang Seng in Hong Kong finishing the session in the green or the blue here on France 24 uh, and the Caspian Seoul uh, finishing up one quarter of a percent. Uh, finance reporter uh, Rehan Baisan uh, told uh, us here at France 24 why this, uh, uh, these figures of uh, U.S. inflation uh, are so eagerly awaited later today. And in December is expected to slow down uh, to 6.5 percent. And uh, if we see a little bit higher than that, the market uh, will react surely. But since the uh, major expectation is that in the U.S. the inflation is softening, that might be a little bit short-lived. This data is very important for the Fed. And uh, so the biggest mover of the markets have been the Fed so far. So those uh, figures released at 8.30 uh, Eastern time in, uh, in the U.S. All right, Charles, we are eagerly awaiting. We hope they don't disappoint. Uh, Charles Pelagon uh, with our business update.